Hello, this video is to do with the, uh, the reactor or boiler heat load problem in the notes. So what we're looking at here is a, a boiler that's having um, methane and oxygen uh, fed to it. So perhaps this is at, a, um, at an oxy-fuel uh, natural gas plant. Um, and it's being combusted and then the mixture of combustion products, so carbon dioxide and water, are leaving at a thousand degrees Kelvin. And so what we want to know is how much heat is being generated by this boiler. Now before we start the question I have to make a correction uh, to the question to make life a bit easier for myself and that correction is that uh, we're actually going to be having both the oxygen and the methane at, um, at 298.15 Kelvin. So this is just because that's what it's tabulated at. And I'll save myself a step because these are, are fairly long calculations. Okay, so we've got some typical uh, boilers here. So they have the, uh, the gas mixture going in here and then you've got your combustion happening in there. And then uh, on the other side, of these tubes uh, would normally be water and then the, the water is boiled and goes to a turbine to generate electricity or whatever it is uh, you're trying to do after that. Okay, so, so looking at this system here, um, what we've got is uh, we've got our, our, I'll just call it a, a reactor. And so what's happening is we've got our uh, methane uh, and oxygen coming in here and they're coming in at uh, yeah. they're coming in at uh, 298.15 uh, Kelvin and uh, and also uh, two atmospheres of uh, pressure. And so for, for every mole of methane we have coming in, we've got two moles of oxygen, okay, so it's a stoichiometric mixture. And then leaving is a stream of uh, CO2, and then for every mole of CO2, uh, we've got two moles of uh, H2O leaving, just to, to balance things out. And so this is coming out at uh, 1,000 degrees Kelvin, and I'm going to assume that the pressure drop across this reactor is, is pretty small, okay? So, so the outlet pressure is two atmospheres. So to solve this problem, I'm going to uh, do a few things now. So, uh, so one of them is uh, assume that the system is at, uh, at steady state, okay? So that should be uh, reasonable, right? so that's looking at what the general case is uh, for the, the heat addition. There's no work happening uh, with this system. Okay, so, so there might be uh, a turbine somewhere else, but there's no actual work here. So what we're getting from this reactor is some heat coming out, okay, and so that would go on to boil some water and then that would go on to a turbine to, to generate some work. Um, so I've been told in the question that it's complete combustion. And I'm also going to assume ideal gas behaviour. So the ideal gas behaviour is important because when we make that assumption, because the enthalpy is not dependent upon uh, the pressure um, and therefore is not dependent upon the partial pressures of each of the components, we can say that the, the heat of reaction, uh, which we'll need later on, is equal to the uh, standard heat of reaction which we can calculate from the table. Okay, so so these are the, uh, the assumptions that I'm starting from. I might need to add some assumptions later on. 
So if I go back and get my uh, equation, it's at steady state, so nothing changes with time. So I can cancel out all my dt terms. And I've assumed that there's no work, so there's nothing happening externally with this system. So, And I've got a, a flow in and a flow out. Okay, so, so I can say that my uh, heat flow or my negative heat flow, I'll call it, is equal to uh, mass in Hn minus uh, mass out Hn. Okay, so uh, I've made a slight mistake here. I should have actually started uh, on a mole basis, so I'll just switch back to uh, dealing with uh, moles here. So. Uh, Okay, so now I've got a, a reasonable basis to, uh, to start from with my question. So, so now I've, I have to uh, calculate the difference between these two terms here. And so, so what I'm going to do is, uh, instead of calculating the enthalpy in and the enthalpy out, which I can't actually do anyway because you don't know what the... Uh, what the absolute enthalpy is, I'm going to calculate the difference between these two enthalpies. And so the, the difference between these two enthalpies can then be used to uh, multiply by the flow of methane coming in. Okay. Now the difference in enthalpy between the inlet and the outlet uh, so there's a change of temperature, there's a reaction. So I need to use a path to, to do that calculation. And so for that calculation, then, so I'm going to start off at 298.15 uh, uh, Kelvin. Okay, so I've got uh, CH4 uh, gas plus uh, 202 gas. Okay, so... So that's my first step in my path, and so that forms CO2 gas plus H2O uh, gas, and then that's heated up. Okay, so, so it's just a heating step, so I end up with the same stuff up to a thousand degrees Kelvin. So my my first step here, okay, this delta one H. So delta one H is equal to the the heat of reaction in going from uh, methane and oxygen to CO two and water. And so I've got my stoichiometric coefficient here, uh, which is equal to the standard heat of reaction as we said due to the ideal gas assumption. So and we'll remember that that's equal to the sum of the stoichiometric coefficient times by the uh, standard heat of formation for each of the components. So I'm just going to go to the data from uh, the text by Hagon Lee. Okay, so uh, the data's here uh, that I'm going to be using today. So, so I need to find uh, methane, carbon dioxide and water. I don't need to find oxygen because it's an element in its most stable form, so the, the heat of formation of oxygen is, of course, zero. So my first term's there, methane. Here we go, here's the carbon dioxide here. And then if I scroll down a bit further, then I've got my water here. Now, an important thing to note here is that water is listed both with a liquid and as a gas. Now, the reason it's listed as both is because for some calculations you'll want to use the heat of formation of the liquid and for some you'll want to use the gas. For this calculation, we're going to use the gas, okay, because the end point at 1,000 degrees Kelvin is a gas. 
And so then if, I'm, if I start from a gas and end up at a gas, I only have to use the heat capacity data. Okay, so, so I've got my, my heat of formation data here, okay, and then I've got my uh, heat capacity data in this section here at the end. Okay, so, so by starting with the gas, uh, I don't have to do a phase change as part of my calculation. Okay, so going back here and uh, exercising a uh, good memory, then so for, for CO2, Okay, I'm reacting it, so a stoichiometric coefficient is minus, plus um, 2 times by uh, minus 2, 4, 1, 0.8. Okay, so that's the heat of formation of water. 2 is the stoichiometric coefficient. Okay, minus... Uh, okay, and then uh, if I wanted to, I could add... Uh, two times by zero here on the end for uh, for oxygen. Okay, but uh, no normally I won't bother doing it. Okay, so so I've got my methane, H2O, and uh, CO2 uh, here. Okay, so we add all these things up, and we get uh, minus 802.25. Okay, once I've got this number, I stop and I look. Because the, the key thing here is that I've got a negative number. And that's what I expect. I expect an exothermic reaction. So if I've got a positive number there, I'd need to go back and have a look. And so this is really important because if you just end up with a positive number there and you don't mention that, then you can lose a lot of marks in your exam. Now, the, the final step in this is the heating. Okay, so if we go back to... Uh, if we go back to the uh, our path here, so we've got delta 1H reaction, delta 2H is the heating up, then we know that uh, delta 2H uh, is going to be equal to the integral from 298.15 to 1000, um, Cp of uh, carbon dioxide plus two times the Cp of H2O. Okay, so again, uh, we have to remember our stoichiometric coefficient here. So, so from the uh, coefficients, uh, I, I can add them together. Okay, so I've done this uh, beforehand. So I'm just adding together my coefficients from um, from the table, and I end up with this expression here. So uh, and so when I integrate all that, I end up with 85.12 kilojoules per. Mole. Okay, so so the heating step uh, in this case is is fairly small compared to the heat of reaction. The delta H is positive, as I expect for heating. Again, if you if you ended up with a negative uh, delta H, then I'd expect a, a real problem uh, there. So when I add these things together, then my my heat loss per mole, okay, or my my heat loss in general, okay, is equal to negative um, 802.25, okay, step one, plus 85.12. So that means that we end up with a, uh, an amount of heat being released of uh, 735 kilojoules per mile. Okay, so so a lot of heat is released by this system. So, so the key points with this here is, is that you draw your system, you've got a delta H across your system, you draw a path that allows you to calculate it, you get your data, and then you're doing your steps to end up with the heat required.
Okay, thank you.